this the most underrated tool in leatherworking? Maybe. So you've seen me use the mini hand plane in other videos, like somewhere up here. But in this video, I'm gonna go into depth about how to sharpen it, because if it's not sharp, it's basically useless. I'm gonna show you how to set it up to get the best results. And I'm gonna show you how to use it on both flat edges and around curves. Okay, so we're gonna get right into this. Uh, so once you have your mini hand plane, you are gonna to have to sharpen it out of the box. If you get one just like this, I believe whatever one you find on Amazon or other suppliers, I think they're all from the exact same factory because I've seen all sorts of different manufacturers names on these and they all look identical. So I don't think it matters which one you get. Also, all of the tools, including these diamond stones, honing compound, the hand plane itself, they're all linked in the description below, which are affiliate links. So if you do end up making a purchase from any one of those links, I get a very small percentage. So it helps a lot. Okay, so once you've got it unwrapped, you're just gonna wanna loosen off the thumb screw for the lever cap, that's this portion, and then retract the blade. This piece can come out. It's got a little divot which wraps around that bar which holds everything in place. So you can set that aside for now. And then we're just working on the blade itself. So the tool steel is mediocre at best, but you kind of get what you pay for. That said, because we don't use this tool a whole lot and we're using it on leather, this blade actually lasts quite a bit and I don't have to sharpen it that often. To keep this thing maintained, all I use is my strop. So out of the gate, you're going to want to start by polishing the back of the blade. To do this, you're going to take your finest stone. In my case, it's 1200. These are great little diamond stones that are super, super thin. They come in a pack of five. So I have 200, 400, 800, 1000, and 1200. Super little thin diamond stones for this application. They're absolutely perfect. If you want to get a set of these, I highly recommend them. I've had no issues with them whatsoever. To get started on the back of your blade, we're going to go for the finest stone that you have. So grab yourself a spray bottle with some water and just a small amount of dish soap in it. I find that helps keep all of the swarf, swarf away. That's basically all the debris of the metal that you're going to take off of the back. You just set your blade on top of the stone and push it back and forth. And that's it. You just do this until the entire back is the same scratch pattern. But you can see this portion is all the same color tone. So once you have your back nice and polished, you can bring this right up to your mirror polish if you want. Depends how much time you want to put in. All you really need to worry about is the first few millimeters of the edge. So I wouldn't be too concerned about getting the entire thing perfectly polished. But once that's done, you can move on to the bevel. So working with the bevel, you're probably going to want to start at maybe 800, 1000, probably somewhere around there will be enough. You don't need to go too coarse with this because that's just gonna end up creating more work in the end. Wet down your stone. And then what you're going to do is put your blade on to the diamond stone and rock it back and forth until you feel a flat part of the bevel lying flat. So when you hold your finger down and press it down, this shouldn't rock back and forth. That's how you know you found the right angle. From there, all you're going to do is lift up the blade one or two degrees and pull back towards yourself. So once you've done that 10 or 12 times, if you put your finger on the back of the blade and gently pull it towards the edge, you should feel a bit of a lip right on the edge. And if you look closely, you can see the shine that's right on the leading edge of that blade. That is where I've sharpened. So what I'm feeling on the back is the burr. That's the metal that's been rolled over onto the backside. That's exactly what we're aiming for. So once you have that burr rolled over onto the back, you're going to go to your highest grit stone and remove the burr from the back. So just set your plane blade so that the tip is off of the edge, pull it back onto the stone, 
and then push it back and forth a few times in the exact same way we polished the back earlier. That should be enough to remove that burr from the back. From there, we're gonna stay on our finest grit stone and repeat the exact same process on our bevel. So we find that main bevel, lift up one or two degrees, and then pull back. If you find your setup is moving a bit, you don't have to hold the blade with two hands. It takes a little bit more control. You can find your bevel here, raise up, and then just pull back. This works just as well as using two hands. And you should feel that burr very lightly on the back. Same thing, knock it off the back. So then our edge is nice and polished. So to finish this off, we're gonna to go to our strop. So I find the whole sharpening process with this specific tool is really there in worst case scenarios when if the blade gets damaged and there's a nick in there or it becomes really dull because you haven't stropped enough. This edge will maintain itself as long as you strop. I find this step is the key to get this thing working really, really well. So this is just a thick piece of leather glued to a wood block with some honing compound rubbed into it. To strop, all we're gonna do is find that bevel and pull back, exactly like we did when we were sharpening. So the result of that stropping should be a mirror edge. So after stropping that bevel, I also do the back. To do the back, I lay it off of the edge, holding with my index finger off the edge, thumb onto the bevel, I just press down. So with that, your blade should be nice and sharp. Okay, so with our blade all sharpened up, here's how you set this thing up. So take your chirp breaker, load it in, take your blade bevel side facing down, load the blade in and slide it down until it's just coming into contact with the leather surface. And then lightly tighten down the lever cap. So with that initial setup, we can now sight down the bottom of our plane to make sure our plane blade is projecting parallel with the surface. So to do that, get a light surface and you're gonna eye down the bottom of the plane. Now I'll exaggerate this and push this blade right out so that it's easier to pick up on camera. So if we eye down, you can see that blade projecting right out. So what you're looking for is that you're seeing the same amount of blade from right to left. So I'll retract this back and I'm gonna eyeball what I think is a good set in. You should almost barely see that blade protruding from the bottom. So if you can see the projection there, that's barely coming out from the bottom. So once it looks like the blade is parallel to the sole, give your thumb screw another little tighten to lock it into place. Grab yourself a piece of scrap leather. It should be a vibrant, hot pink piece of leather. You'll definitely get better results. So all we're doing here is making sure that we are in fact getting a shaving. So you can see what I'm getting here is kind of fine little dust. We don't want that. We want to actually have a shaving of leather. So I'm going to loosen off the thumb screw and give myself a little bit more blade. And then we'll try another shaving. So that is better. You can see what we're looking for. The leather holds itself together and it doesn't just fall apart into dust. Once you have all that full shaving, now you know you're good to go to start using this on your actual wallet pieces. So what we need to do is actually elevate our 
piece that we're going to trim down. So you can either use a piece of leather on your workbench or you can use a piece of glass, anything to raise up your workpiece so that it's sitting in the middle of your hand plane. So with that rough setting that we got earlier, we want to take a few light passes off of our wallet piece and see what we get. So right out of the gate, this feels pretty good. Feels like it's taking a shave in, but it is kind of dusty. So I do need to take a heavier shave in. Okay, so we've got it readjusted. So there is shaving that we're looking for. So just so you can see, that's how much blade is sticking out for me to get that shaving. This is about half a millimeter maybe. Another thing you can do to ensure that you aren't planing your edge out of square is flip it around and plane in the other direction. And you can see in that time, we got a really nice shave in that's almost the full length of the wallet. So that's great. That's really good. So this is a good example. We flipped it over. We got a full width shave in. That means our blade is square. The edge is square. So we're looking good. So I just rinse and repeat this process for my all other sides of the wallet. There's a nice shaving. That only took two shavings. That edge is nice and clean. So now to do the corner, we're actually gonna to wanna to retract the blade and take a much lighter shaving. So we're gonna work with a super light touch when you're going around a curve. So there's that curve further refined. If you've used a corner punch, doing a corner with a hand plane may not be necessary. Or if you've used a blade and did many small cuts, this may not be necessary. But it's good to know that you can get that corner refined with the hand plane. And you can see the burr or the edge that's come up here. So now we would go through edge bevel and then start our sanding process. So hopefully after watching this, you have the confidence to go give this a shot. If you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, like, subscribe, hit the little bell notification icon to know when I post my next video. As of this recording, May 2023, if you haven't already, head over to Instagram and go check out the normal wallet challenge that I've got going on. You can find the plans for that pattern as well as a bunch of free ones on my website norfolkhandmade.com. And again, if you need any of the tools or materials shown in this video, you can find them in the description below. Most of those are affiliate links, which means I get a very small percentage. So it really helps out the channel. Okay, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.